Welcome guys to this session of Nairo Bays. Today we're taking you on an exciting journey looking at our music industry, where it's been, how far we've come along, what opportunities are there, what lies in for you. And I have a very interesting panel today. Uh, you know, we've tried to balance the mix. Um, these are guys you all know, you've seen somewhere playing, uh, you look up to them. Um, so I'm going to let my panel introduce themselves. I'm Eugene, I play keyboards. Amani, I play drums. <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> my name is Antonio So, and I'm a vocalist. When did you get into the industry? Grew up listening to musicians practicing the the backyard. Joined them instead of playing the kicho. Uh, learned from them the tricks. Then you just do your time and do the process. Uh, with time, you just find yourself in platforms which you didn't know you'd get to at some point in your life. And yeah, that's what people call probably making it into the industry. But if you ask me where I can pinpoint it at, I can't really pinpoint it. I think for me, it's, I think it's about eight, eight, nine years ago. Um, I think I grew up in church. I'm, 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 I grew up in a music music uh, family, uh, and everyone plays, and everyone sings, blah blah blah. But then I thought, I think in high school, then I decided I think I want to do music uh, full time. Um, so since then, I think it's been a journey of just trying, trying out um, uh, how the industry um, is gonna work. Um, so I started out um, in a cover band, uh, played, uh, got sucked, uh, got another band, got sucked, like that. Um, you know. What did you do? You're not in the I was getting fired. <laughs> I mean, it's because, you know, sometimes you opportunities just come up, you know. Yeah. And sometimes you want to venture into something different. Yeah. And you know, and when you speak it out, that's when you know mm. uh and sometimes you wanna you wanna juggle in between uh this whatever you have and the others and the guy's like um, I think no no takua busy sana mm, so it be the room and they're like you go and do you when you go and then at some point you know the greener become the 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 the, uh, the grass becomes greener yeah, on that side. Yeah, you know? <laughs> True. Yeah. So you keep on moving, moving, moving. So yeah. I think that has been my journey this far. So it's just been moving um, from one place to another, from one group to another. Um, all in testing waters sometimes, and and we are here. We're yeah. here now, yeah. uh, a few years later. Yeah. And we are gonna. I have a t-shirt by there, it's called Imandiku Wapa Can't Stop, Won't Stop mm. Can't Stop, Won't Stop uh, So, I think for me uh, I can't stop now And I will never, never stop, stop. stop. Mm. You'll always keep playing <laughs> So I'll just keep on <laughs> playing <laughs> yeah. And we see where God takes us Yeah, mm. yeah. fantastic For me, I think, uh, like with every musician Obviously, we started in, in church uh, singing in church and then you know in school and then when you get to high school you sort of start to find your voice and then after high school is when I think I started to take music seriously but then I ended up on TV as an um, actor and TV presenter before people actually knew I could sing so I think for me I used that t uh, to like let's say first to get money to shoot my first music video and, and record Chitsunga and a few songs from my first album so I used that to now get into music so that you know because now people had seen me on tv so i was using that advantage of at least now i can put the music out there and people won't have to ask who's this guy because that time i, I realized it was very difficult even on interviewing like famous musicians it was very difficult for them to like be known because they made up on our top facebook nothing so it was just difficult um and then i use that to you know just make people know who antonio soul was and then it's been a journey since till now since yeah. as 2009 yeah yeah so when you look at oh guys in the states are playing like this you know big gigs guys are doing this from a level of professionalism because there i mean um does it happen and maybe i'll ask you like Antonio. so mm. when you're getting 
uh, you know, is it a must? Like, if you have your music, like, you know, the shit music where you're coming and saying, this mm. is the music audition, come mm. play, mm. and if you can't get it, psh, go. Is I think I think for me, like, um, you know, trying to ex- first uh, uh, understand the Kenyan music industry as an industry first is its own story. Because I really look at us as a music scene. Because culturally, socioeconomically, and even politically, we haven't reached a point where you know, we can say this is an industry that is an evolving, you know, like a hundred calls here, you guy, you're supposed to be doing the Tonight Show with uh, with Anto today on NTV, you know, those kind of, we, we haven't reached that point. I think what makes the professionalism work is individualism and individuals who decide on that I'm going to create a space for myself that allows people who either work with me or who see me do my thing or who want to partner with me, understand we have to be professional a certain way. Because the thing is, especially most of the great Kenyan um, music players come from very disenfranchised communities. So, sinu wa mta, wa suwa hood. So, ata penye mzazi alikuwa nakuwa lao ucheze mziki ama uimbe, there was still the idea of, I'm not going to take you to piano school, sri guitar classes or what. They're looking at you at afar like, you know how parents are, let's see how it goes with this, because it doesn't work out, it won't happen in my house. So there's that. So it's you understanding yourself, realizing, hey, man, say, I've, for me to be able to get to play with Richard Bono, I have to be a certain way. So what does it mean? It means you have to be professional. It means you have to practice every day. It means you have to take all nonsense that comes your way. It means you have to, if it's that shit music, where do you go to learn it from? A lot of people genuinely have taught themselves to be great. But your discipline is what makes it professional. So even if you're dealing with a new artist, it's Amani's job to sort of steer this amazing, great vocalist. Like, you know, this is how things are done. Like, if we say rehearsal is at this time, it has to be at this time. If you want to record, this is the kind of suit recorder because the product has to be that way. But I'll have to say, like, professionally, I think there's a lot of work for people to do because Amani, Eugene, and my vision might be really big, and then you're let down by, let's say, a corporate who doesn't understand the value of a, an amazing backline. And then they're feeling like, What? I'm paying half a million for a backline, and you're thinking, but you want a show worth $3 million. So why would you get a show worth $3 million with 50K backline? Yeah. So it's, I, I, I honestly think it's not, it's been, it's, it's not easy. We're not there yet. No. You all know Eugene is driving, the, he's the guy behind Piano City. Um, I mean, and you've been trying to raise the standard and the bar. So what, what, what is that gap that you've seen in the industry that's missing to get us to that next level? Uh, I, I'd take a different curve yeah. from what uh, Antonio Sola said, which is true. Mm-hmm. There's profesional- professionalism for professionalism for musicians, one. Mm-hmm. How us guys, guys grew up, um, learning was just a headache. You go try and play in church, the first thing that happens is the, the main keyboardist there will slap you or kick you out. <laughs> Oh, play for you. <laughs> um, you grow up, you can play a few chords, so you can play in a service, a prayer yeah. service, but you still want to grow further. Talking to somebody else to show you something small is still a problem. Um, the church I grew up in never had drums. Wow. So when drums came, drums were in the church for one year as a no public spectacle. <laughs> Cage there, fenced, in fact, yani, mm-hmm. do not touch. But it just looks nice for for sure. Uh, I think the, the 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 industry has grown musically speaking because right now, if a man was a keyboardist, I can approach him and tell him, "Hey, there's a song I had you play on this record. Can you show me what you did?" Mm-hmm. And he'd be open to that. Previously, that was such a problem, and I don't know if I'm speaking to so many people, but it's so true that, like a level of a man where he is right now, he's basically deemed untouchable. If you want to play like a money, don't even go ask him. Just do your own homework somewhere else. That has shifted. Now, if you want to talk to a professional guy, you can easily do that. They're reachable. And with the dawn of new forums where people can share music, uh, the scene is becoming better. Mm. Also, um, when we were very young, I think the only musical format we had then was live music go to studio after you've rehearsed you're given hours to record like two hours so you pay for the studio per hour one touch or two touch or three touch and leave there's no of 
let's record the drums first, cut at the verse, take a break. No, it was one touch. And that made people get very serious. Currently, with the dawn of computers and technology, people are becoming lazy in recording. While we want to do a lot of live recordings and sound like the rest of the world, we want to take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's where the pop music has gotten a strong, strong um, emphasis more than live music because it's the easiest way out. But as we're going on, as we're going on, people are appreciating where we came from and we're getting back to live music and why it was important then. Because you're realizing you cannot export. For instance, it's hardly the case that most artists in Kenya can hold a show for, m for more than 90 minutes. And that's, that's exactly what the world needs. Mm -hmm. Somebody who can run a show for 90 minutes with a band. So when you fill the Kenyan space, you realize ah, Kenyans can go with pop or live. But out there, if you can't hold a show for 90 minutes, it's not going to work. So artists are slowly coming to accept the need for live music. Mm -hmm. Um, the third one I wanted to talk about is the fact that our schools have not been geared to train people for the market. So you, you see somebody who's done a university degree in music, but the orientation first is a white collar job. That has been the scene in Kenya for so long. It's unfortunately so, so present that I don't know what is the problem with music not being a profession. You'd hardly hear students say in class, oh, I want to be a musician. It's hardly the case. It's because I think our culture has been mm -hmm. driven down to people to think that yeah. musicians are not <coughs> workers. Yeah. Musicians it's a hobby. Are, yeah, it's a hobby. Mm. Yeah. It's a fun thing to do. It's, it's a, a fun thing to do. Thing. And then when you're done, yeah. you, you, you have accounts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your accounts. Yeah. <laughs> so that has been the scene for, for very long. And I'm longing for a time when yeah. you can have a university for practicals. Mm. Where if you're going to this school, when you leave there, Manze, you are hot for the stage. You can either do performance, composition, live performance, um, recording, mm -hmm. production, whatever Mastering, it is you want to do. Yeah. yeah. But it's practical, yeah. not just theoretical. So we have very many good musicians. Like you wonder, when we were young, we used to see some people playing and they were very good. When you were grown up, where did they go to? Yeah. They didn't leave the country, they're just here. They're just around. But why did they stop doing what they were doing, which yeah. was very good then? Yeah. If they kept being consistent in what they were doing, probably they would not be the same story as what we knew then. They would have been become something, something better. Um, so, my friends and I, Amani being one of them, we just decided, hey man, let's stop talking about these things and wishing, we do let's about do something it. about it. Yeah. Mm. Let's start programs and forums where we can impart live practical skills. So if you're saying, uh, let's talk about how to play Zelle, for instance, a headache for many drummers. It's practical. This is how you play it. This is how you... Uh, do your roles, this is how you put it in a song, etc, etc. Um, that's a scene I really want to see grow, but that's mm. a gap which mm. is still open. Like what you're saying about shit music, yeah. I am quite sure. If somebody came from <laughs> another part of the world with shit music and said, okay, play this for me, I want to sing this, you're talking to yourself. You won't play. Yeah, but we are very good ear yeah, musicians. Yeah. We can play from any record based on our ears, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a good thing. I think the, 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 the other side of the world, they admire people who can play by ear also. Yeah. So it's a... So it's a mix of... Yeah, it's a of, mix of, of both. Yeah. You touched about something where you said, um, you know, where people, you'd look, at, you'd, you'd look up to people, then after some time, people fade and go under, and yeah. they go away. Like, I remember there's a show I'd gone to see these old guys, Wazes, Le Mangelepa. I think it was at Allianz, old Mzez playing, I mean, and their yeah. vibe and the music as in they're doing these guys back in the days used to fill Nyayo National Stadium, mm. fact. But today you do a show and I mean, why, why is it that the industry is not appreciating 
or the people are not appreciating the music that's coming out these days or what's the difference it's consumption it's, it's what people are being made to consume yeah it's true, it's true. because as what we're doing right now for example this should be something that airs instead of a soap opera at 8 p.m till 9 p.m a show about music and about this you know that popular song you know by is out so played by amani now they see amani and then he's live there on tv for one hour in that conversation mm. so what we're feeding people it's a direct re- reflection because what we've we've taught them that uh, you know if you want great music we'll give it between 4 and 5 pm and it's music videos if you want to host uh, on tv you know the host a mediocre rapper who is saying I, I hello can i have your number plate well you have an amazing musician here you have Eugene with like 10 let's say 15 year olds who can play the keyboard with the eyes closed that's what we should be celebrating yeah. but we're celebrating hello hello baby can i have your number plate so people end up consuming and, and thinking that is what is amazing so for someone who's been on tv and radio and i'll say there's a huge huge problem in terms of what people think we should be pushing we push a lot of mediocre talent a lot of mediocre music a lot of mediocre content you could be untalented and really work hard towards getting maybe the hype and great music or whatever because a lot of times even when you're talented you might not you might feel like you know people owe me but still what we make people consume is very important because why wouldn't Le Mangelepa feel a, 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 a stadium today because even the Yankees the ones who afford or the ones who should know about Le Mangelepa have they've been told ah oh, was there you know they've not been told to to respect them mm. to go look for them to mm. get the LPs to get the CDs to go listen to them on iTunes yeah. so they've just been told ah these guys you know and so those stories that we tell are very important instead of giving giving them two page spread what would we rather do a nani was caught with nani in some room and and that's a story so i think content that we put on media is very important where people are fed information the fact that we don't feed them good music they will just never know it exists Okay. So 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 it means then so what what do we need to change because then um is it because uh, I'm trying to bridge the gap be- between when I start to play from church and for me to play in Coke studio for me to play in um uh you know at 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 that place where you know it's the top top gigs you're playing you know um What's the gap? Because then the only channels I have is okay. One, it's very expensive to buy the equipment we play with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so if you don't find some some someone who can invest in you, it's hard. Buying a pair of sticks, it's like fifty. It's like a, what, fifteen hundred bob. Getting a good keyboard, um, you know, even just learning how to mm-hmm. sing. I can't go to Voice you know. Lesson, so it's yeah. I only have that and YouTube, and then I'm left to it's between. Now, how do I get myself from here to get to there? Um, so, but what what are those avenues today that needs to be there? Because then, it's not just about coming and sitting and playing. There's a process that happens. What's that process to get you prepared? Like, you know, before you get to that stage where, you know, you're playing with the who is who. Um, I think number one, it has to be a personal decision, mm-hmm. and it has to be very deliberate. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's where that's where your drive comes from. Um, uh, I personally decided that I wanna, you know. Then when I used to watch videos, you know, I'd, I'd see, um, I'd see uh, Lucky Dube and the band. You know, I'd be like, I really wanna play like that guy one day. You know, and that's very many years ago. Um, uh, watch uh, DVDs by Joy Celebration mm-hmm. from South Africa. And, you know, and I'd be like, I really want to do that, you know, but then I had to make that choice, that decision myself and decide that it doesn't matter what I'm, I'm going to go through, but I want to get there. So all this gigging and um, trying out things was just my way of uh, like my journey now to get to get to where I am probably. Um, and it, it, it takes lots of sacrifice, you know, um, sleepless nights. I remember I, I, I'd probably wake up in the middle of the night because I have an idea, you know, and I try without sticks at that time, you know, and I try and, you know, and see how it sounds, you know, how it feels, you know, and with time, 
with time all the avenues you get even even the gigs that they don't pay you know that's an opportunity for me those gigs are like opportunities for me to rehearse and to practice for me rehearsals don't end in the rehearsal room mm, yeah for me even the gigs you know like even the even the biggest gig I'll play that for me is also a, a rehearsal all that in the aim of getting better uh, at my craft and you know also learning how to work with yeah, different people because then it's i think it's it's um it takes so much to actually work with someone like antonio so because i we have different personalities i uh, working with eugene it's we have different personalities or working with any other person so it takes that kind of um consistency mm. consistency is key yeah so for those people probably who like fade away at some point you know i think it got to some point and they were like this thing is not working you know i believe it's it's not going to work if you quit mm. but you have to keep on moving you know um they didn't uh, i mean there are people who are still struggling to 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 get an audience for like 100 people uh, or or even 50 people mm. but you have to keep on doing it a very good example um, is someone like Ricky N- Namarafiki. You know, he started out the jazz, um, the jazz gigs, and you know, I I remember playing in one of them, and there were like five people, and I was like, wow, this is amazing! Like five people can come and sit and listen, like and watch. Um, a few years later, the auditorium is full. You know, so you have to like keep on moving, keep on rehearsing, keep on consistency i always say consistency is key in whatever we do consistency is key it doesn't matter i mean the challenges are going to be there i mean people will people will will not come for rehearsals on time uh people will not pay for shows uh there'll be money and then someone will decide to run away with your money you know and things like that but then you have to keep on moving yeah you have to keep on moving all these opportunities you get they have to be like a stepping stone to another greater opportunity. You know, people. I know people yeah. probably watching are waiting to hear money say like, you know, there's this place, this website you go to, you sign up, or like <laughs> there's this person who is called Nani, you call them, they hook you up with a gig. I think people need to listen to what Amani has said very seriously because yeah. a lot of people want to be told where to go. But none, especially for these guys who came even before me, they, they, they don't know where to go. Even they don't know where to go. What they do is that they keep doing exactly what they know they've woken up to do today. You can't... We know the one thing we always say is... Especially as artists, we're like, Hey, man, how come they don't get those kind of calls? Mm. How come they don't, those people don't know me? But you realise that even for that artist who you might want to make fun of or that instrumentalist who you're like, mm, This guy knows Nani. This guy comes from this family. When you really look behind it all... Their money, the Eugene, you see dressed nicely, you should see them when they're working. Yeah. And probably him messing up on the drums at home. And he doesn't stop. So that's what people need to always know, that there's no other shortcut. It's you just have to do what you do amazingly. Mm-hmm. There's no at the Niende in Jacob studio, na drums when you're in the chairs. Do. They have to, someone, you play with that gig for five people. Because probably the producer will be in Kenya and has only heard about that gig. Mm. And be like, you know me, I don't like this noise. I deal with this African artist every year. Let me sit at that funny gig and go listen to artists. Yeah. And says, I want that drama. Yeah. I don't care what you, I don't care you don't like him. You guys have never heard of him. That guy who played that gig, that's the one I want. So you have to, I love the word that he used. And that's why I'm really reiterating what he said, deliberate. Manze young people, our dream your word in a man. Deliberate. Hakuna wad muimu kama yo. Uwezi amkatua subu yu nasema, mi inda kwa mnoma. Dramin C. Levia to Meva, you see, Guamele jacket to Meva, Amania Naveo jacket, Jomikona, Doya Kunu no jacket, but see jacket in a chaser. So see look, see swag in a fanya, Eugenia Quemnoma, the skill period. And see, for, 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 especially for the now generation, mm. I think they're called the microwave generation. Mm. You know, they like, oh. want all those instant. calls, you know, instant mm. things, you know, mm. like, want big gig, nene, 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 nene. you know. There are auditions to go to, yeah. you know, where you'll fail, you know, but you know, and so you're a man, you know, yes. what? And you're like, <laughs> me, <laughs> <laughs> where <laughs> those things are, by they, they make you wake up, yeah. Like, <laughs> you just have to, I mean, 
it has to be very deliberate. Mm. Yeah. Like whatever happens, mm, happens. But this is what I wanna go. Mm, this yeah. is what I wanna do. Yeah. This is where I wanna go to, and you have to keep on moving. Touching on what Anto said about dressing, yeah, the swag doesn't play, but also our generation, especially the starters, they need to know how to brand themselves. Mm. And branding here, I'd love to say branding is has many definitions in it, but it generally is a promise. And that promise is kept. Mm. For instance, when I say Mercedes, what do you feel? You just feel elegance, class. When I say bro box, what do you feel? Problem box. It's the same thing that people see when they see musicians. When they see you play the keyboard, they say, yeah. hey, are you calling Eugene? I really need to think about the rehearsal sessions mm -hmm. because he'll be serious with his work. He'll be there on time. He'll be diligent. He's a loyal player. Those are branding elements that we need to think about even as you're starting your, your journey. So that anybody who thinks about working with you, they know for sure you will deliver on some few traits. Uh, I hate to say this, but at times I look too good than what people think about me. Uh, I mean vice versa <laughs> I think <laughs> people have overrated me yeah. because of how I look mm. or how I present myself you present yourself. Yeah. yeah. so you find people who have very good package but how they've presented themselves is so terrible this guy can play amazing stuff but he just comes with a, some tattered jeans a color smelling sweat trust me it doesn't matter how good you play mm -hmm. Next time I want to want to work with you, so it's something that also determines how far we yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean yeah. striking like, striking a balance. Yeah, because you, know, you can't you can't be all that good, play really good, but you can't you can't really present yourself yourself uh, you, yourself that good as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Karma, yeah. yeah. Like people, people want to hear you play, but they have to close their nose. So yeah. how, <laughs> you know, how are we going to enjoy this game? So like, what? Yeah. On stage, quite, people don't know how small stages are. But they ask musicians when we fart on stage, and the whole band was like, "Hey, you, Anthony G, gonna fire for stage? <laughs> These cultic behaviors, you know that for fun, let me say. But like, imagine if that was consistent. Yeah. People can't just can't play. Yeah. Can I be honest? Apple Megongan Depot. Mm -hmm. There was like for a moment, it was like master class, right? There. Yeah, that was very good. And then, mm. So the level of technicality. I mean, um, everyone will want to come on stage and you want to, oh, I saw this cool thing I saw on YouTube. I practiced the whole night and you want to, <laughs> you want to come and play everything and you want to. Uh, how do we how do we then ensure that, um, you know, we get to spread the level of technicality that's needed? So is it, are there right channels for mentorship? Are there enough? classes um because then how 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 do we then get everyone to get to understand like what are those key things because it's a performance so before you get to that stage for that perform performance what are those things that people need to to learn and put in place um let me start <laughs> from zero every young musician will, will always want to show the latest trick they learned yesterday mm -hmm. So I learned how to play a triton. <laughs> triton is such a nice thing, depending with the context. Yeah. If I'm playing a rumba song, then I put a triton there, my friend. Doesn't. The, the band leader look at me like, <laughs> why? Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> and I think it goes all around. Yeah. Guitarists have their own licks they learn. Drummers have their own chops they learn, and. Every new musician wants to all out show mm. every other person who is a hey, I can, I can, I can. I can lemon face. This. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. now the difference between the mature musicians <laughs> and the upcoming ones is the mature ones have all that database in their heads, but mm. they know where to remove it. Not everywhere. But where did you learn that? Like how? How do you? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. Things? I'm coming to okay, that. Okay. Okay. So now, some things come with time. Like you go for a gig, you overplay. You think you nailed it, then you're told, hey boss, we don't want you here. Mm. Like, even me, a service where I used to play for free. Hey. I, I was just texted and told, hey Manze, 
eh worship leader yetu amesema hataki at- ukamu kwa sababu zetu tena juu kuna chords nyingi sana unacheza jazz mob kwa, <laughs> kwa worship set it's so discouraging yeah. but that's an eye opener you, you, you realize yeah. Eh, yeah i might be over overthinking and overdoing some things uh, which i think are good but really that's not what people want yeah mm-hmm. yeah so for the most people who, most of the people who've made it so far have had to learn it the hard way you experience it uh, it's up until now when we have new forums here where we can talk uh, we have groups on whatsapp we can talk tell people this is not what you do mm. when you learn a new trick can i even say i've gotten to a point where i realize lessons on youtube will never be your practical lessons I believe that the strongest lessons you learn is the ones you can adapt and interpret into your own language and implement. Mm-hmm. Copy pasting like if a man you plays a chop like uh, a song starts tomorrow me I'm like why because a man played it. It would be so out of context. It would be so out of context if I do not understand what yeah. he was thinking. Yeah. So taking that time to know what was going on i think is the biggest problem we have locally so people run on youtube the thing you learn first is a thing you pour on stage and those are some of the things we're trying to nail down and cut um, but as you say i don't think we have enough platforms or forums mm. where this can be addressed and so that people know if you're playing a rock song my friend <laughs> Go all out simple but loud and not no runs no yeah, yeah there's you know. a structure of how to play yeah. discipline you have to be yeah. disciplined in how you play yeah mm-hmm. this is how you play seven song this is how you play a worship song this yeah. is how you play an R&B song yeah we don't have those platforms yet and i think it's something we need to um, enforce in the small whatsapp groups and mm. forums we have just to see how people can be in the right context context really matters in this case yeah, yeah. Uh, to add to that yeah. um uh, i'll just share from my personal experiences um and i think he said something very profound he said you have to do the time you know it's a process yeah and you um unfortunately unfortunately or fortunately that's that's like the best way for you to actually get to a point where you understand what to do when you know because i think there's so much you can grab mm. there's so much that you can, you can put in, in the in, in in your mind and in your in your head over time but how you place it is what really really matters i remember playing um a, a rock gig sometime and i was playing bass and i was all over the place you know and the guitarist is actually a rock guitarist mm. like a a proper rock yeah. guitarist and you know he came and told me by the way you play really well but i think you do a lot of unnecessary stuff when you're playing rock because rock you can play one note the whole time and you're good to go yeah i mean the music will sound really really good um and another thing i think people people always forget is consistency mm. uh when it comes to playing um sometimes you have say you have a series of chords that you're going to and you have you know there's a way to play it and then when it gets to probably this uh, accord in the in the next cycle you play a different thing you know so it ends up being messy yeah uh, or probably you're supposed to do like and that's what you're supposed to do or in whatever genre mm. and then at that point you end up being like you know so you like you throw off everyone uh, because probably you're trying to um uh, experiment, experiment you know i do lots of that sometimes <laughs> but yes i try and and you know like be very very careful yeah. because playing in a band setup is not like playing solo because mm. you're playing with a keyboard player you're playing mm. with a bass player you you have a singer a lead singer you have vocalists uh, yeah. like bvs yeah so you have to be careful so that everyone has their own space in in in, in the um, in, in the music so that you don't you do, just don't play anything, anything anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. you know but fortunately or unfortunately it has to be in the experience like 
you won't wake up one day and you're like, um, I think now. The next day when you're playing, yeah. someone will tell you, I have a day. I think I'm all over play. <laughs> you know, and then I think in when it gets to maturity, yeah. it gets it has to get to a point where you actually tell yourself, I think I overplayed. After yeah. a gig you can actually evaluate yourself and you'll be like, Hey, I think I overplayed. You know? And that's um, that's maturity. Yeah. It comes with time. But I think it's it's important for whoever whoever is playing to be just um, yeah. careful. Yeah. So that you're not just all over the place. Fantastic. Do you always do you always, yeah, okay, sorry. I yeah. think you even for look at it from a football point of view, for someone who for me who doesn't understand football rules. Yeah. And but if you think about it from even any sport point of view, it doesn't matter if Messi, Rooney, Ronaldo all played in the same team. Like if they all played for Manu, yes, Messi will score. But Why did you mention Manu? <laughs> so, so <laughs> Man <Sorry>. City. We were not very genuine and go. We were doing so well until that moment. I did a thing in the band. Now we're chasing him. He's 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 chasing him. Until Eugene was like, mm. don't be ashamed by that. Where? Yeah, so, see, I don't even know football, you guys. But you remember I know. <laughs> that was a mean, but you just gave me a look like, hey, I'm sorry, you just. It's almost to watch that. It doesn't matter if Messi scores, yeah. but someone passed the ball. Yeah. The, 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 from the keeper to the ball being you know, t- tossed or, or kicked, there was a process involved. A fine Messi scored. Mm. So that was a moment when you know, um, Amani had a solo. That was a moment when Eugene was fading out and it was his moment to shine. Yeah. But he did not shine when everybody else was busy trying to get something to be yeah. done. Yeah. And I think when you know yourself, let me tell you, Ukijijua, Amani and Ajijua, Amani knows that he can... Amani knows that he can decide to take the whole a, a, a band away. Yani ile a peleke kila mtu, mbaka vocalist a realize, hey, Amani ya natuosha, wacha tujifanya ilikuwa, eh, saizi ndiyo solo. Yeah. <laughs> he could do that, but he knows enough to know, like, this, I know myself yeah, well yeah, enough yeah, to know, yeah, yeah. this is not an audition, I'm not sure enough for anything. I, yeah. This is just the right time to play as a And I'm telling you, for as long as you know yourself, no matter how good you are, you just know, period. Yeah. You don't have to show off to anyone. So it's about the delivery at the end of mm-hmm. the day. Yes. And just what, on what discipline. Hey, man, is is to, yeah, yeah. 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 Discipline is key. Sana.